In this video, I'm going to be showing you LM Studio, which is an incredibly powerful application that you can run a ton of different models locally from Llama 3 to the Phi models, to the Falcon models, Mistral models, the list just goes on. But to get started, you could head on over to LM Studio and then you can select the machine that you're currently running on. Once you have it installed, you will have a screen just like this. It's as easy as selecting one of these models that you see on the dashboard here. You can search for the model within the search bar here, or you can even paste in a Hugging Face repo URL. If we want to get started with the Llama 3 8B Instruct model, we can just simply go ahead and download it. So I have a relatively quick internet connection. This model, even though it's about five gigs, should download relatively quickly. So while we're waiting for the model just to wrap up, I just want to do a little bit of a high level overview of the actual interface. So on the left hand side here, you have the search interface where you can go ahead and search for different models. Say if I want to search for llama based models, you can go ahead, search for llama based models, and it will show you all of these different models that are available for you to download. It's also nice to have the number of times that it's downloaded as well as the number of times that it's been hearted within the interface. You have a general idea on how popular these various models are. There's also a fully featured AI chat interface, which I'll go into in just a moment. There is also a playground as well. The other nice thing with LM Studios is you're not just limited to text-based LLM models. You can also use other multimodal models such as Lava. And then the last item within the sidebar here are the models that you have locally. Here, now that we have this downloaded, if we just go over to the AI chat interface, we can go ahead and get started. Once you have a model all installed, you can just go ahead on the top of the screen here and select the model that you have downloaded. We can go ahead and select the new system prompt here. Here we just have a default one that says you are a helpful, smart, kind, and efficient AI assistant. You always fulfill the user's request to the best of your ability. In terms of the specs on my machine, I have an M3 MacBook Pro model with 18 gigabytes of RAM. One thing I wanted to point out is say if you're using this for coding and you say generate a Next.js boilerplate, now, the one thing you'll notice right off the bat is when it starts to return to you is it doesn't actually interpret this markdown, but all you have to do to actually see that with the nice syntax highlighting like we're used to with these ChatGPT like interfaces, you can just click that markdown button. And then all of a sudden you have it all nice within the styling and syntax highlighting and all of that stuff. There is also a mono space option as well, if you'd like. So you have a few different options to play around with. Definitely for coding use cases, I've encouraged you to use markdown but otherwise plain text just might do if you're using it just for interacting with questions that you might have and whatnot. If I just go ahead and search for Lava here, I can go ahead and download the Lava model here. You can see all of the different specs here. If I wanna try out the Lava Phi 3 mini model, I see it's only about two gigs, so it might be an interesting model to explore. And as you can see, the interface is really just intuitive. You can just download it and start to play around with it. The other great thing with LLM Studio is that it does have this local inference server that you can run. While there is this nice interface that you can interact with if you wanna try out all of these different local models and just play with it within the interface, let's say you have an application and you wanna see how that application runs leveraging those local models that you have downloaded. You can just go ahead and use this as a local endpoint. You can go ahead and make requests to the local host and the chat completion at least in this example, but you can also use it for different things. So if you want to use it for embeddings, you can use an embeddings model. If you want to use a chat completions model, you can use that. The thing that's nice with this is there's a ton of people that are interested in open source models. And there's also some restrictions for some people that might not have a credit card that want to try out these different LLM applications, but they might not be able to tie a credit card to an OpenAI account or an AWS account or a GCP account or what have you. Being able to run this all locally is really empowering because you're able to build out these applications and especially with something like this where you do have a local endpoint, it just opens up the opportunity where all of a sudden now we have these powerful models that are becoming smaller and smaller, all the while becoming more powerful and they just become more accessible as a result. Now that we have the Lava model installed, we can go over to the Playground tab here and we have this multimodal session. And what you can do here is say if I want to select the Lava model, if you're not sure of the preset, you can just go ahead and click Default LM Studio Mac OS Preset and then we can go ahead and load up this model. Here you have the option where you can go ahead and reduce or expand the CPU and GPU utilization. 
There's a number of different things that, that you can go ahead and grab here. Say if you want to get the API model identifier it is say if you're setting this up within an application like we saw with setting them up from a local server, you might want to go ahead and grab that model identifier. So say if I want to have both Llama 3 as well as the Lava model running, now the one thing that you have to be mindful of is your system's limitation. So say if you're having an application and you have embeddings and then you also have a vision model, having those run concurrently, it could be and likely will be an expensive process for your machine. That's one thing to be mindful. The more models that you do run, these slower things can run and it can get really slow if you're trying to have an application that's doing all sorts of things, right? So you can imagine an application where you're embedding things and then quickly you're pivoting to going for a chat completion for local inference, that can be quite expensive, right? Having to load those things up, it does take some time to be able to pivot back and forth as you saw when these models were loading in. Just something to be mindful of. Once you have them all loaded in, you can go ahead and start the server here just like this. And then you can go ahead and interact with your local server just from whether it's a curl request or you can go ahead and interact with some of these different options here. They have a number of different Python examples within here. It'd be nice to eventually see some different programming languages as well. But nevertheless, there is the curl command as well as these examples that you can easily translate into the other languages that you might be using. I just wanted to do a quick one introducing you to LM Studio. This is just another really great option for running models locally. There's other options out there such as Olama, which is pretty popular, as well as Jan AI, which I also encourage you to check out which are both doing similar things just in different ways. That's it for this video. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.